Tom. Hello everybody, Tom Fox here. Welcome back to more Super Mario 3D World. In the last episode, who cares about progress? Because I got Jules one of the best D's nuts jokes I've ever gotten before, but he promptly fired back. In this episode, we're gonna be continuing on to the next world. However, before we go on, uh, we have our next guest with us, who is me. AKA is Takahata 101 from uh, of many of many things. I've actually realized lately introducing myself starting to become a bit of a meal. So uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's like anything anyone has done this for over ten years. Eventually, it's just gonna start being like I did this. I did this. I for those who know, don't know, I worked on Dragon Ball Z abridged, Helsing Ultimate abridged, and various other abridged series under the TFS banner, as well as working in Yu-Gi-Oh abridged, Sword Art Online abridged. It goes on and on and on. TTS, lots of stuff, lots of voiceover stuff, and now last year. I injected uh, the uh, anime pill and became a VTuber. Yep. Mm, male, no. male VTuber extraordinaire Takahata 101. Yeah, it was great until the others showed up. It was. It was. I probably shouldn't tell you that I'm going to be one of them at some point. Oh, it's okay. I could use more guys. I need more guys I know. Plus, there needs to be more guys in their 30s VTubing. I need the same level of sarcasm. All these 22 year olds with all their goddamn energy, with all their unironic <laughs> screaming of let's go. I'm like, no, 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 guys. No, 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 no. No, you, <laughs> no please, please don't stop. Stop. No, no, let's not. Let's, stop, let's slow down for a second. Let's slow down for a second. Be aware you're going to have a bunch of trauma. You're going to need therapy, kids. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just, 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 just spoken, work spoken. for your, work for yourself, for God's sake! No, they, they are spoken. It, it just sometimes they have the energy of spoken like someone who hasn't been to therapy yet. Mm. <laughs> uh, it's, it's been interesting, but it, it's fun watching this, uh, watching Mario just be recreated in so many different ways. Because a lot of people like ourselves who work online do the same thing. They kind of re recreate themselves, trying to, you know. To, ooh, no, that was a curse. Yeah, I'll, I, uh, I need, I, uh, that, I'll, I'll get that down eventually. Oh, but for now. Also, viewers might notice that this is the first episode where uh, where the guest is not playing uh, playing with us. That is because Taka's switch is uh, currently broken. That is true. My left, it's the left thumbstick. This has actually cursed me for a couple uh, playthroughs. What if I told you I've agreed to several like streams, and they're like, "Okay, where's your switch?" I'm like, "Oh, oh, oh, oh! I have some bad news for you all. Um, I don't have. I have a switch. It's just not working." <laughs> Uh, it, it was just, yeah, the left thumbstick, which is actually one of those common errors I found out, too. Uh, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the like, is it Joy-Con Drift, or is it just that it doesn't work at all? Uh, Joy-Con Drift, uh, essentially what happened okay. is all the way on the f furthest left that it can go, it does not detect it. And yes, I did the auto sensors and everything, there's no way to fix oh. it. They have to actually go in there and manually fix it, which is like, I, I looked online, is the most common physical problem with the, the Switch, is actually the left Joy-Con specifically. I was kind of blown away by that. But it, but I found out when I was trying to play uh, a South Park game, the South Park, the Fractured Butt Hole, and some of their mini games required like a lot of movement. I just couldn't get all the way left, so I couldn't complete oh, mini sucks. games. I know it was such a silly issue, but uh, I, I I know there's a custom place around I can go to. You but you know pandemic and anxiety and everything. So yeah, I still appreciate you involved in bringing me over here because I get to see this plate. And I can actually just talk about a million things because we can actually talk because we've actually met in person several times oh yeah which is kind of funny because it was never our intention or our plan to meet up in person yet we have uh like i think the first time we ever met in person was it was twitchcon yeah i think so it was it, like no 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 no, no 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 not twitchcon it was pax prime PAX. it was pax west they call it but pax prime pax prime yeah, yeah. Uh, it was PAX Prime, uh, and it was specifically... Uh, it, was at the, it was at the Twitch booth, right? It was at the Twitch VIP booth. I remember when I was entering and you were there, you said hi to me, and I remember it because... <laughs> someone was leaving the Twitch booth, I'm like, Oh, I've seen you! I didn't say anything to the dude, because I got nothing to say to the guy. I don't know what I would even say. <laughs> you make stuff! Like, what the fuck else do I say to the dude? But it was Dr. Disrespect. He was leaving the full... <laughs> no, he was leaving the Twitch area in full costume, and I'm like, like I finally went, Oh, that mustache is, that mustache is fake shit okay <laughs> oh i figured it was i figured it was i mean he was wearing it decently but once yeah, i saw yeah. him in person i'm like oh you know it's totally fake okay okay it's it's uh, like uh, online like through cameras like all the uh the uh lighting the, like the, pro the processing yeah lighting processing and like the uh, the artifacting on, on cameras like it's it's a lot well, easier to well then uh, one, it's a lot harder to tell like one year later it was in person. Uh, after he like justifiably had was upset after someone opened fire at his home or something i don't fully know yeah. what happened there <laughs> with that i mean because i don't even want to assume what happened there but just him ripping off the costume in fucking frustration i'm like well okay now Everyone knows what he looks like. Get this. Oh, you got this. You got this. Oh, oh there we go. that is Ooh. beautiful. That is that is clutch. 
And you're two points yeah, away but... from the sex number, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, FYI, I, got, I FYI, some points here. Not enough, though. Not enough. FYI, I also have a puppy on my lap here, so FYI. You might hear some. Oh, you got, Gre you got Gregor with you, yeah. Yeah, no, he uh, he likes to be on my lap every now and then. He's my little sub emotional my emotional sponge. Mm. He's uh, done a lot of the heavy it... lifting during COVID, let me tell you. <laughs> ah, I'm so glad I got him. I, I couldn't have imagined getting through COVID without him. Uh, he's my... it's, all, it's good having a companion. I, I, have a, I have a little, uh, I've got a little Sharpay myself. He's not here right now, he's at doggy daycare because he's oh. been a little ball of energy recently. Oh, see, see, I need to do that with my guy. He's a pug, but he just, he's such a little ball. He just loves hanging out with people. Like he's like some oh, yeah. some tough like I'm I'm I mean, I'm happy my dog's a social butterfly but my God can you go <laughs> more like a hornet how often it stings uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey no he just he just he he's audible and smart enough to know that when it's time to go it's my fault you know and it's, <laughs> he's, he's he's like he wow. knows he knows I'm the master of everything he, he controls all the play is I wish I could explain to him I don't control the weather though. I think he thinks oh, that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I wish I could explain to my dog that, too, because I, I, same I, thing, I, he'll just stare I, at me like... I wish I could explain to him how good he has it. I'm like, I work from home, okay? You, are, you don't know how, how good you have a dog. I work from home all the time. If dogs could talk and they could talk about what their owners did, and my dog said that, yeah, my, my, owner, my owner lives at home all the time, and I still give him grief, all the dogs would look at him like he's the biggest asshole in the universe. Yeah, it's like, yours, yours stays home, mine goes out all the time. What the hell? What? Do you give him space? Well, no, I, I make it so that if he doesn't spend every waking moment with me, he's an asshole. You're just a, you're an asshole! <laughs> I love my dog, though, to death. I just gotta give him a brief here. But, uh, this is... By the way, I gotta say that you were zooming through this, dude. You were very good at this. Oh, thank you. I, 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 I've, had, I've, had, I've had a lot of practice at this, uh, very recently, considering, you know, I've been, I've been playing through it, but, like... I, I, I also also in terms of like the uh, the the stars and whatnot, I've I've, I've got I've got a guide up because we're starting to get to the parts where it's going to get a little bit difficult no. to find them. Yeah. Well, first of all, first of all, when it comes to any of these kind any kind of collective thought in games, there's no the, the when the point of it is like to explore and shit, and if you don't have time to do it all, there's no there's no harm and foul in that. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. This is a, this, is a, this is a, essentially a giant perspective puzzle game. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, they just switch with they just fuck with the perspectives all the time. Where, like, like where the hell is everything exactly? That's that's part of the game. That's part of it. One of the only oh god, we get ripped apart this in the comments here. But I feel like one of the only franchises that actually managed to switch to like 3D and platform well was Mario. Mm. And, like I feel like everyone else who attempted it, and there may be some good examples of successful ones. The only ones I could think of doing it in a way that really like resonated long term was Mario. Like there were a lot yeah, of like even that, even going so far back as uh, as like sixty four like no, that, I, that I, I mean a lot of those sixty four games are not aged well because of the camera specifically because of the camera they they can't get away from having a good camera you know they oh yeah because like, it, 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 it was it was such a it, like it was such a such a learning curve back then but oh, like but not even that like here, here's the thing like one of the things someone pointed out I is, mean for developers oh yeah, oh for developers too yeah sorry. Uh, for example, like a lot of people, I'm, I'm breaking Zelda here. I'm not a big Zelda f player. I respect Zelda for the, for the, you know, for the effect it had on the fan base, uh, for how much effect it has in the gaming industry uh, overall. Well, Ocarina of Time was considered the like the the gold standard. It is not anymore. I know Breath no. of the Wild is, and to a lot of people, but in my opinion, I think, um, I think one of the gold standards for the classic versions of the games is going to be, and it's so fucking hilarious. It's going to be Wind Waker. Because oh, yeah. because they focused on stylized graphics in a very stylized way, instead of like ultra realistic, photorealistic, yep. whatever the fuck they want to, whatever you want to call it, they focused on a cartoony style because that will age better. And lo, lo and behold, when they did the HD upgrades, it was the only one they could HD upgrade and make it look better. Mm -hmm. And it because was... uh, I remember I remember how just how just how absolutely angry people were at the, at, uh, at uh, Twilight Princess HD. Because oh. they're like, oh man, they're they're upgrading everything. No, they just ported the game over and add some uh, some like higher res textures and uh, and like better lighting. It's uh it's still kind of looks like hot garbage, and even yeah. more so because you can see all the polygon angles. And that's exactly the problem. Whereas in with a Wind Waker, it was designed that way. <laughs> they leaned yep. into it, and for that reason, it's aged well. And games that have stylized graphics age better. They just do. It's why a lot of photorealistic graphics I never really care for. Uh, it's 
It's why a game like, uh, it's a game, you know what? It's why a game like World of Warcraft can last for so long. Mm. Specifically because, um, their graphic style is cartoony. It is! And yeah. the reason why they, they actually did it that way, instead of going more hyper-realistic, is, th and I believe this is true, uh, no, don't quote me on it initially, they wanted World of Warcraft to run on pieces of shit. They wanted it to oh, run yeah. on absolute garbo computers, and that's just, why they, they want, uh, I, I can see that, just having it run on everything is just, would just be that a huge boon. Exact, to, that was the smartest decision they could have made for themselves, because then they were able to get, get access to an extra, like, five million computers, essentially. But, I remember, uh, I remember back in, like, the, the Wrath of the Lich King days, my cousin was playing on, I don't know how good the computer was, but I remember his computer had a CRT monitor, so... Yeah, so, the, they designed that shit to run... <laughs> They designed that shit to run on all that stuff because they wanted people to play the game. They didn't- Yeah, it worked! Yeah, I remember a lot of MMOs coming out after that, like, literally, you had to have a top-of-the-line computer to play it. I'm like, there's no fucking way you're gonna get a player base then! It's why a lot of shooters now start off as free games, because they want a player base yeah. to, to play it. Because they can't keep charging Shoot. that- Oh, I'm sorry. That was, that was my bad, I thought I could make that jump, and I couldn't. As of recording right now, I believe Halo Infinite uh, is starting to have a very oddly named name because of the f player base sure isn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's interesting era. They, uh, it, it's very, very... They, it seems like they designed that game around making money first and gameplay second. Oh, they designed it around. I mean, game. maybe, maybe. No, uh, no, no, no. Here's, maybe what, not gameplay. Here's, here's, here's what happens. But like, here's but what, like here, game here, modes. Here's what complete. Here's what keeps happening. Here's what keeps happening. The devs keep making fun games, and then the capitalist. And I say the capitalist because I don't want to say the CEO. It could be a shareholder. It could be a dev who is only thinking about the money. Comes in and goes, "Oh, well, no, we can't make numbers go up then." And then they change the game, and then get all shocked when people get mad about it. You know, and that's okay. that's kind of the that's kind of the it's 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 where I always say this in no other industry. Oh, for God's sake! Almost made it in no other industry. Do does the consumer base get guilt tripped as much as this? I feel like. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I I always draw this comparison. I want you to imagine. Uh, I'll use Battlefield twenty one forty two for a good example right now. All right. Let's just say that. Imagine if uh, Ford. Uh, released a truck called the 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 Ford Battlefield 2142 where the brakes only worked half the time and the bumper fell off and if you brought that up you were called entitled <laughs> I want you to imagine if Ford would be in business <laughs> yeah that's, it, that's, that seems to be the trend with a lot of video game companies nowadays like you you want to fit like a finished game insert uh, J Jonah Jameson laugh here oh well, not even finished game it's just like well don't you know how much you're hurting all the devs we're really trying here I'm like I'm, you're hurting the devs guys you're hurting yeah, the devs like, uh, how they, much, ain't how getting, much they ain't getting residuals for this game don't pretend otherwise how much you your how much are your CEOs making versus versus the people no, you hired to actually make I, the game I don't even care about the CEOs I care about the shareholders I'm like how much are the shareholders are they are that's they, true yeah. Yeah. Are they are, are they demanding that their numbers go up because I'm really getting sick of them controlling artistic shit because it's really a waste of time half the time Because if they just wait another six months half the time the game will actually be good and It'll actually make it goddamn money, but no shareholders who don't even understand the industry gotta have numbers go up And I'm really yep. sick of that controlling the industry because it doesn't work all the time which is why, which is why indie games are such a breath of fresh air. Oh, it's why, it's why when you hear the stories of like Stardew Valley, oh, I'm just so happy with the dev of Stardew Valley. Until it turns out he's a monster, then we'll have to disavow him. But uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like I, 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 I well, what happened? Well, I don't know. I fucking, I go. Do you put anything past anybody nowadays? Not really. No, I don't put anything past anybody. Well, are they human? Then I don't put anything past them. I don't put anything past them if they're human. It's like I like all these I like, Mario. I like all these Hollywood writers and I'm just like I like all all these guys who made all these amazing works and I'm like, oh I love their work until I find out they have a sex dungeon. There we go. Ooh. It's like I love South Park, but I'm a known South Park apologist, so mm. Mm. Well, that will they. I mean, they, like, uh, uh, one, they, one, one thing I, that, that I can say about South Park is that, like, when when they know when they've made a mistake, like like with the uh, the Man Bear Pig episodes. Oh, that might be one of my the Man Bear Pig two parter. You, you saw it, right? The uh, they did a Man Bear Pig episode, which was their attempt at talking about global warming and shit. Uh, then they did a two parter in a later season uh, where they have to find Al Gore and apologize to him because Man yep. Bear Pig is fucking real and it is killing yeah. everybody. And it has one of my favorite scenes in all of South Park where the where the couple and their kid is in the de restaurant and they're talking about 
They're talking about uh, the wife is talking about how worried she is about Man Bear Pig, and the, the husband's going like, "Oh please, just a bunch of political dogma." Man Bear Pig breaks in the background, starts ripping people apart. What about that? Looks back at looks back at Man Bear Pig. Looks back at the wife as Man Bear Pig's just eating, ripping apart people. What are we gonna do about Man Bear Pig now that he's here, though? Really, like, really, what are we as individuals gonna do about Man Bear Pig? <laughs> and it's, it's just it's just so good because the whole crux of the episode is they have to apologize. And yeah, that was that was their that was their uh, what was it? That was them like like make, was making an apology to the fact that, 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 that they made a, they made they did one episode about Man Bear Pig and they did a two part two episode apology and that says yeah, something. exactly. It says something. Well, they fucked up with so many different communities because by nature of what they are, they make fun of everything. And specifically, they said in an interview, they make fun of that which they that it, any group that tells others how to behave. They actually specifically hate um, thought. I guess they they call it. I think Matt Stone called it thought police. But that thought police, yeah. But that goes well beyond political politic political dogma. That goes well oh, yeah. beyond one political there, there's, dogma, there's, there's which is which, which is why a lot of people like for years believed that they like for a long time people thought they were heavily conservative. Then for a lot of years people thought they were heavily heavily liberal. And it's like, well, no, 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 no. You guys, you guys forget. They have a principle of comedy, and that kind of guides them. Uh, and that is also partially why everything falls apart for them sometimes, because of that principle of comedy. Um, whereas in, they, it's it's crazy to think about all the television shows we grew up. I was actually hanging out with Luke and Jim the other day, and we were uh, playing uh, the we were playing specifically. Oh no! Oh, sorry, we were playing Simpsons Hit and Run. We were playing Simpsons Hit and Run, and it was just so much fun because we were talking about how the show, essentially seasons one through nine, was just a solid run of The Simpsons. Even if not everyone liked season uh, one and two. Oh man. Keep going. Uh, I'm, I'm still listening. This is just a little season, frustrating. Season one and two, but seasons like you know three through nine were pretty consistent. Well, at least people like yeah. eight. Nine's where all the iffy shit started happening. Uh, but but then you look at so, uh, a show like Family Guy, where the initial four seasons was really strong. It returned and it was okay. And then after that, there were about seven seasons where they had an okay episode here or there. They're still going. And then you look at South Park, which is the complete inverse of everything. Whereas, and it started really crappy. <laughs> Yeah, it started. Yeah, like it was. Uh, it, 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 it started as mostly just like just uh, just like crass jokes, and now it's like it's. They never thought they were gonna get a TV show. That was the yeah. thing. They ne when they got a second season, they're like, what? When they got the movie, they thought they were done in Hollywood, and then they got signed to three more seasons. That's why season four onwards, aka after the movie, specifically, uh, they start taking it way more seriously, and that's why the quality jumps up, and then it peaks in season eight with uh, one of my favorite episodes, which, of course, is Fun Time with Weapons, the anime episode. Oh, God, yeah, that's such a good episode. Well, they, Trey said in an interview, the, the thing about South Park is the best episodes of South Park are the ones where the kids are just being kids. Yep. Or Randy on his bullshit. Yes. Which yep. they admit Randy on his bullshit is because they are now in their 40s and they identify more with Randy <laughs> as a character. Uh, but they, in recent years, especially, like, because they have infamously fucked up with the trans community as well with some very awful episodes. Mm -hmm. Because they just didn't understand everything. They didn't. They and they and they admitted in interviews as well that they were just very ignorant about it. But just based on the language and how people were talking, that's what it felt like to them. But they've had to really heavily walk back a lot of their a lot of the talking points they made about uh, transgenderism. Tran transgenderism, especially. But they also they had an episode of the uh, season in the P in the pre PC season, which is the PC season's rather infamous because that's where <laughs> my Twitter feed that day when that season came out. That's where uh, PC Principal moves to town, right? Sorry, we're talking yeah, about yeah. South Park here instead of talking about Mario. Uh, the reason why I talk about South Park a lot is because I realized recently while talking to Lukajit that I was in grade three right when South Park came out. Same. And that is why I think uh, it resonates stronger with me is because the kids were the age I was exactly when it came out. And the show itself has grown. It has. It's yeah. grown. It's grown. It, it, like it's 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 grown all, like partially as like like people like grew up with that show, but it's also grown kind of partially as like as Matt and, and Trey growing as well. Exactly. This is and here's one thing that is imperative to know: Matt and Trey got kids now. They got yep. kids now, so that ch it's changed a lot of their perspective. Which is why, if you haven't seen any of the any of the I call them the pandemic specials, there were four of them. There were four movies. Uh, there were two specific uh, pandemic episodes, and then they had the. The time skip, which were technically three direct uh, direct to TV movies, 
on Paramount Plus. Oh, there, there, wait, were there three of them? I only saw the two. There were four. There were four. There were four pandemic specials now, essentially. Though I count the two time okay. travel ones since it's still connected to uh, the main plot. So they had the original right, right. one, which was the the uh, I call it the first episode of season twenty five, season twenty four, which is the pandemic special, which I actually cried watching because of the ending, which was Stan's. Stan was crying. Stan was crying because he was showing concern for his friend when, in fact, he wasn't doing well. So he was, like, rejecting yeah. his issues. And I went, oh, as a nerdy guy in this business, let me tell you how many people I know who do that. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Who consider that only consider other people and they don't think about themselves. And then he had a breakdown, and the whole show just stops as Stan's crying. And then Cartman stops what he's about to do, and it becomes a nice, wholesome moment. Well, Hartman's just wants the pandemic to continue on, but hands over the something they can cure, work on the vaccine. He hands it over, out of character, just because his friend was crying over it, and he wanted to do right by his friend. And I went like, "What is what is going on with South Park right now? What the fuck is this? <laughs> this is this is deep." And I remember tearing up. And then they had the next special, which was the vaccine the vaccine special, which is pretty fucking funny. Then they had the time skip ones, which were on Paramount Plus. I know, interesting, interesting era, and that was announced. Oops. Those two specials were announced after, by the way, and this is something why I always bring them up, because of how they started. Matt Stone and Trey Parker were just college roommates. Like, they got paired together, from what I'm understanding, when they went to college, and that's how they became friends. A computer just made them friends. I mean, like, that's, uh, that, I mean, that, that's, that's how some of, some of these things uh, start off. It's just pure, like, coincidence. Yep. Pure and happenstance. So, well, their, their, their final project for their course was, they, they had to make a video production, so they made Cannibal the Musical. <laughs> so they, they went out to Col the Colorado woods with their friends, and they just dressed up as hikers, and it was their trap, and they have to eat one of them, and they do a whole musical about who, I'm deciding who gets eaten. <laughs> And that, was their, uh, that was their first project. I, I love their musical chops. Oh, that's that's the strongest part. Uh, and here's the thing. Then they had nothing to do after that. They had nothing to do, and they just had a bunch of spare time. So they went down to the local craft store, and they bought a bunch of goddamn. They bought a bunch of they bought a bunch of construction paper, and then they stopped motion to cartoon. And then they put it on a VHS, and they got in the hands of George Clooney, and that's how they got their fucking show. They just went. I got nothing to do. Might as well make something. And. Now, and this is something, I don't know if you know this, or your fans do, but before those two time skip movies came out on Paramount Plus, they signed a deal with Paramount and Comedy Central, I think the parent company, for six more seasons, 13 or 14 movies. What? Yes, but don't forget direct TV movies. So like right, long, right. long episodes. Yeah, uh, yeah. And four, and no, 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 let us not forget that essentially these these were guys who just went down to the local craft store and grabbed constructive paper to just make something because they couldn't draw. So what what could they do? Well, they could cut construction paper out. They found a workaround. That's why it looks the way it does. Is it's a workaround? It all was, and you, they signed that deal, the final the final South Park deal, essentially, for nine hundred and fifty million dollars. Good lord! One of the biggest television deals of all time. Because I'm going to assume they're also signing over their, their brand as well with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. They might be doing that as well as part of the last deal because Trey said, and I'll stop talking about South Park after this. Trey said uh, said he didn't want to be writing the <laughs> show into his 50s. So now based on this, he'll be writing it into his 60s. The son of a oh, bitch geez. played us. <laughs> he wasn't lying like at all. Like a goddamn fiddle. Like a damn fiddle he was playing us. So, and that's, I think that's a big thing to know is like, it just came down from like, hey, let's make something. And then skip ahead like almost 30 years, $950 million deal. You know, like, how do you not look at that going like, wow, fuck, that is awesome. Yeah, it's it's like, if you think about it just in, just in terms of like, of, I would say maybe like the starting point for them. Oh, yeah. Well, because don't forget, they had the first viral video, essentially. One of the first, yeah. viral, which was the first cartoon they ever did, which, with you America, Nick, we with yep. you America, Nick. Like that, that they couldn't shit. Like that was starting to spread around a little bit when the internet came up, but essentially how that was spreading around in LA was George Clooney got a VHS of it. And he would show it to people when they came over because they'd never seen anything quite like that because adult animation was very rare. Hmm. What? Uh, he in, heavy in that metal, time at least. Heavy metal, that's about it. Yeah, <laughs> heavy metal uh, in, in some in, anime. That's about all you get. In uh, in in that time period, at least, because because I think like uh, in the early like the earliest days of animation, they were more or less made for adults. The uh, original run of Simpsons, uh, it was meant for adults. Obviously, kids loved watching it too. But the thing well, I'm is, talking about like I'm talking about like the 19 like 20s. 
Oh, God, it was all meant for adults. Yeah. yeah. That's why they started putting the yeah. cartoons as well, because that was just a fantastic way to get an extra five minutes of content in there. And, man, those animation, that animation on those original cartoons is fucking slick, too. You can. Kick the baby. Don't kick the guy down, baby. You wonder why the baby wonder why the babies look like that in South Park? Why wait why the why wait why why Ike in particular look like that? Yeah. You wonder why Ike looked like that? No, or I don't I don't know why, but why? They couldn't draw a baby. <laughs> and so they just said he was Canadian to explain why he looked like that. Because then they could <laughs> So then they just made all the Canadians like that. <laughs> it like, is a cascading. It, it is a cascading explanation, dude. That is what like, we've condemned our universes. <laughs> our universes, Canada, to look like this. This is why they hate talking about the original three seasons because, like, they look back like, oh god, the animation. Oh, <laughs> try not to vomit. They're like, oh god, it's so bad. Ah, they can't look at it. They even struggle to look at the movie because it was done in the old style. Uh, but yeah, no, that's I. I I'm very. I guess, much uh, I I guess like uh, switch, switching up the uh, switching that up then. Yeah. Uh, do you feel do you uh, do you feel that way about uh about uh, Dragon Ball Z abridged ever? Uh, about like, how the first few episodes, like the first oh. few, like the first episodes. Uh, a, a very a good friend and a big critic of the stuff I work on uh, once said, um, I don't think they realize how much your ass was saved by that first episode being pulled down for a couple of years. And it's true. The first episode of DBZA is not good. It's not good. We didn't have a writing team yet. We didn't actually know who mm -hmm. was going to be writing it at the time. It was actually a lot of people in the room all trying to get their jokes in, so to speak, right? So, unfortunately, it, I think the first episode, specifically the first episode, has aged tragically really bad for DBZA. But right immediately, episode two is just so much higher in quality. If anything, I'll say that I think the first episode of Hellsinger Bridge has aged really bad, too. Uh, especially because... And in particular, that one for me, uh, the voice I do for Alucard in the first episode is bad. Mm. It's bad, and it's because, specifically, I had surgery shortly after that. For my nose. The I actually oh. had a deviated septum. My, my, the bone inside my nose was actually twisted sideways. That's why I sound really yeah, stuffy. I, first couple years, I, I sound can... stuffy in all my voice video. Now I sound way better. Oh, nice, dude! Oh, ah, oh, shit! So close. Oh, I, that was so, uh, sorry. I, 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 oh. Can I jump off the window here? No, I can't. Damn it. So, like, I think I gotta. Mm, there's no like. There's no way to. Oh I, man. I, you, you'd think. I gotta get up there somehow. Maybe. Maybe I could spin jump up there. Oh! 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 Damn it! You I'm almost made. The, you almost. Yeah, you you gotta be able to. You, you're getting there. You're getting to the right height. I got the height. I just don't have the the length. The girth, as it were. Oh, oh, there we go. Mm, that's I girthy. think you need the cat. I think you're supposed to use the cat suit to get up there, but I, I, I just don't have it right now. No. Oh, this is the game with the cat suit, right? Yep. How did, how did the meow 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 part of the game work out for you? Oh, I, I mean, I, th I feel like a lot of the game is built around it, honestly. Oh, they'll all the way around again. Oh. Nah, it's all good. As long as, as long as I don't hear those those dulcet chimes of the uh, of the of the, of the the fact that I'm running out of time and I'm gonna die soon. Dun, 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 oh no, you're not under wonder. You're fine. It's not a Sonic level. That's true. <laughs> but at the hundred second mark, it'll it'll start doing that. Mm. Uh, with, you asked me about Dragon Ball Z Bridge, though. Yeah, have I do I have I thought any of its age? Yeah, some of it has. It's just by nature of what comedy is, a lot of it does age up a little bit. There's a lot of jokes I would redo, but that's oh, I, think yeah. I think that's it could be same for any. Writers, I I think one of the biggest my one of my biggest problems with I think how we parse media is we don't get we don't grade it on the curve at the time it was released, and I think yeah, we, yeah. All, often enough like here's the thing one of my favorite shows is, is uh, Clone High, from my childhood. Oh, I love that show. Now that show is is both hilarious, it aged really well and really poorly simultaneously. Because, oh yeah. Specifically because some of the jokes are so fucking clever. And then some of the jokes are so lazy. At the same time, <laughs> there are what I call lazy gay jokes. Mm-hmm. Like, the punchline is, isn't that, looks at the camera, gay? Yep. This show was written in 2000, of... this show was written in 2001, that was still considered funny. It was on its way out, but these were kids, ra 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 these were two guys in their 20s raised by 90s and 80s comedy, so they were still going to find it a little bit funny. They got away from it really quickly because they realized it wasn't funny anymore. And then they went, you know what they went on to make after that? The Clone High Guy. Uh, Lego Movie. Or even more than that, they, the Lego movie was one of their big things they did, but they... Uh, Sp with, Cloud, Spider- Spider-Man, right? Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Oh, they did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. and then 22 okay. Jump Street, the Lego movie, and then Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. 
Boom. Wow. There you go, guys. If they were canceled for being bad writers, they never would have been able to make that movie. You know what I mean? So that... It's, there's something to be said for improving, you know? And there's something to be said for changing. Like, James Gunn wouldn't write the shit James Gunn used to write. I definitely need the cat suit here, so oh, yeah. I'm probably gonna have to off Mario. Oh, here we go. You have to, cat suit you're, gonna do it all, you're gonna have to do the entire thing all over again. Well, oh. not the entire thing. I could just, I'm at a checkpoint, so I can just die and, oh. and find and find like the uh find the power up somewhere. Hopefully I can work like that. I uh but no, there's just there's this the cool thing about a lot of those, you know, animators and everything. Gendy Tartakovsky is another one, the guy who made like Yeah! Oh god, yeah. Gendy, like Holly was like, wait a minute, Gendy's a really good director. Yes, he's not just a good animation director, guys. He's a great director in general. It's I forgot the movie that's coming out like very very soon or came out very recently that he did. Uh, he did series. he did the first three uh Hotel Transylvania movies. Yes! And they really, had to right. they really had to twist his elbow on that third one. Uh, but also, I think the studio, like, they're gonna give him the movie he wants to make, which was a Popeye movie, I think. Which is one of the things he wanted for a long time. I'm having trouble finding the cat power-up around here. I think the cat power-up's all the way at the ground level. The thing did- the, the The thing actually changed on the outside of the building. Well, the starting location, right at the drop there. Yeah. That's a key lock. That, that key lock right there. That, yeah, that, that leads to the next area. I think I do have to start the level over again in order to get the cat power up. Ah, buddy. Let's see. If I hit try again, does that send me all the way to the beginning? Hmm. Let me ask. Let me yes, ask. Okay. Let me let me ask you a couple key questions here. As a student, as someone around the same age as me, uh, someone yes. who's growing up with the same media as me, what is your favorite episode of The Simpsons? You got one. You got one in your head, you're, and you're probably already. Oh my god. What is the one that if you're like, hey, you want to watch The Simpsons, or you want to show somebody The Simpsons, you go, I'm going to show them that episode, because it always makes people laugh. Uh, Cape Fear. I want to kiss you. Yeah, that's it. That's it, baby. It, especially, I, you, I, you, you know the true story behind that episode, right? No, I don't. It was infamously under, it was, it still needed more time in the, uh, in the oven. No joke. Really? That, that thing ran in at 16 minutes under, at about five minutes under. So they had to keep adding jokes. They had to keep adding jokes to it. That's why there's so many innocuous jokes that kind of are just there for like 10, 15 seconds and they cut to the next scene. They had to add like six minutes of them. Jeez. The last joke they added was they just filled up every last second they had to to get to that 21 minutes with the rake joke. <laughs> oh yeah, the rake joke. Oh my god, I forgot about they, this. Also they, like the, uh, they, they, they had to have filled time with the musical numbers as well. Oh yes, dude, they had to keep filling up time. They had, it, it clocked in at 16 minutes. They needed another five minutes to, another six minutes of footage. So that's why, if you ever see a Simpsons episode that has the full uninterrupted intro, it ran short. And they needed to fill wow. up, they needed to fill up that 21 minutes. That is why any of the episodes that play the full intro on television literally had to cut the intro to save time. If they played the full intro, they had to include the full animation intro to max out its time. And I went, oh, that makes so much sense now. And that's one of the episodes that maxed it out. It's it's infamous because they had to they had to add shit to it constantly. It that's the third star. Where the hell is the second one? Oh my god, it's further back. I gotta do the level again anyway. Again! Where's the fourth star? I have to <laughs> I have to I had to kill the magic koopas before the uh the, the uh uh before the gondola ride to the last area there. Man, Cape Fear was one of the first episodes of the show I ever saw. Fucking hell, what a what a what a what a come down after that, you know? It's like, oh my god, this mm. show. Like when I heard when I heard Frazier's voice coming out of Side Joe Bob, I went, oh this show, okay. Cause my dad was watching Frazier at the time. Hello, Bart. Ah! <laughs> Hello, Bart. I l legitimately for Perfect Cell and Dragon Ball Z abridged, I took a little bit of Sideshow Bob. Are you kidding me? I can hear it. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Hello there, Goku. You, you can hear that. You can hear the the, the Sideshow Bob confidence. Like Cell had some confidence. I, I, Sideshow Bob had a level of like snarky confidence that was just so hilarious, though. I know. I know the later seasons aren't great, but one of my favorite jokes from the later seasons is like all the clips of uh, Bob saying "Hello, Bart," and then it's like the uh, the what is it? It's, it's like a shuttle in like a uh. uh in like a city that's called the Bart. Hello. And he sees Bart. it drive by and he goes, Hel hello Bart. <laughs> that's good shit like that. I love jokes like that. They just Man, they just subvert that shit. We've done the joke a million times. Do it again. <laughs> uh good stuff. Like So tell me, do you not have a tattoo on your chest that says die, Bart, die? <laughs> Who me? Oh, this no. is German for the Bart. The, the Bart. The. 
Oh, well, from that one who speaks German could be evil. <laughs> <laughs> no one who speaks German can ever be evil. I just, goddamn, I love that scene. Goodbye, uh, goodbye, <laughs> Snake. May the next time we meet be under more felicitous circumstances. Go. Go. Take care. Take care. Go. 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 <laughs> it's sad. I'm like, oh, now I want that show. Now I want the show of Snake inside your bomb being roomies. That sounds fun. <laughs> it's just because, like, like even like when like when he's writing the evil letters, God, use yeah. a pen in his blood. Use a pen. Use a pen, bot side Joe Bob. <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh oh just, god, it's just every joke hits. Every joke hits. Every joke mm -hmm. lands. The following people will not be killed by me. <laughs> Bob Flanders, Ned Flanders. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? <laughs> Homer Simpson, Marge, Ma Ma Marge Simpson, Ma oh. Maggie Simpson, and Lisa Simpson. Bart, did you hear? Uh, no. no, no, that is all. <laughs> what? Bart, Bart, did you hear that? Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> it also has the infamous Bart. You want to see my new chainsaw and hockey mask? Yes. It's one of the greatest jokes they've ever written. <laughs> one of my oh. buddy, uh, one of my buddies, Proton John, uses that as an alert for oh. his uh, Twitch screen. Oh, stream. Oh, Proton's got excellent taste. This is why me and Luca wouldn't stop talking about it when we were streaming. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no, it was fucking hilarious. Uh, like we were. God, there's just it, there's so much hilarity in those old seas Simpson seasons, specifically a lot of, <laughs> a lot of a lot of sexual ambiguity too. Like there was a lot of like, Homer was very. Hetero flexible, I will say that. He was just oh, yeah. he'd be very comfortable with sexuality until it was it happened enough that they felt they needed to address it and they actually had their, their one of their first Emmy winning episodes in the show's run. Was that, that was the uh, that, that was was that Homer's, I'm assuming that was the uh, the, the gay episode? Homer's phobia. Bingo. Yep. I know a lot of people look back at it, they don't like it. I don't understand I don't think a lot of people are aware what an absolute fucking coup that episode was. Mm. That was a big fucking what? deal because they finally they had a cartoon character be put in a situation where he had to explain why he why he felt uncomfortable about it and he realized he couldn't quite quantify it yep and and that I like and it was so brilliant and also casting John Waters as the gay friend brilliant brilliant <laughs> casting what brilliant casting also that gave us the best joke I, I don't care if this whole episode's problematic in the grand scheme of things it still did a lot of great shit and it gave us the gay steel mill yeah. They gave us the gay steel mill, Dad, everybody. Why'd, Dad, Dad why did why'd you bring me to a gay, bring me Dad, to a gay steel mill? Dad, why did you bring me to a gay steel mill? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We and probably got a lot more to talk about, but this is the end of the episode. What the fuck? We have so much more to talk about. about I this, know. Though. We have so many more. At, look, I, I gotta, go I, I gotta join you at the at the Weary 101, man. Well, okay, you have to, you have to take the anime pill, though. You know that, right? I, I, I mean, I've got, I've got Mr. Hyde ready, to, ready to go. Remember? Oh my god. Da, 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 da. I gotta have you. I, 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 gotta, I, got, I gotta have... I gotta have a bunch of people who are who, who are VTuber curious. Uh, I, I gotta have that where everyone's like, Oh, guys, lock the doors. <laughs> What's you are not leaving until you take the anime pill. Anyway, Ruby. Taka, where can people find you? Uh, in a state of anxiety. Uh, they can also find me at twitch.tv slash Takahata101 on VTuber Takahata101 over on Team Four Star as well as we're releasing the Hithel series. Where Cell goes to hell. That's literally the plot. <laughs> I've been enjoying that series immensely. I'm so happy you've been enjoying it because I think it's a fantastic writing exercise for me and the guys. I think it is a way for us to crack our knuckles, tackle some characters that... It's villains. Who gives a shit if you crap on villains? Uh, <laughs> and it's been a lot of fun. It really has been. Before we end this off, I just gotta say that the scene where Free Frieza, Dodori, and Zarba just had the whiteboard trying to figure out how to get oh, back in Oh cell. my god, thank you for I loving that. I just... Love I that scene! Uh, maybe you should target the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> His what? I love anyway. that. Uh, you have a good <laughs> Thanks for having me. I gotta end the episode, dude, because I, I got another thing I gotta record in two minutes. What? That's impossible. Is it with me? <laughs> no, okay. Talk to you later. No. <laughs> it's, uh, okay, thank you so, so much for coming to talk. Don't, I gotta end this episode, uh, forget, and, uh, and uh, like next time we'll continue subscribe. on in World Castle. <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Later.